Hi everyone, my name is Blockdown and in this video I'm going to show you 100 plus building tips, tricks, details and ideas. First up, we're going to take a look at roofs. You might find yourself at this stage with a build. There's a lot of different ways you can go from here and we're going to take a look at a few of them. Starting with this. A super simple roof shape using stairs and upside down stairs with slabs running along the top. Although this one is quite basic, it can be very effective when used in the right place. Moving along to this roof shape that is built up using slabs instead of stairs. This gives the roof a shallower pitch and can add a little variety to your buildings if you're building up a village. This one's a roof shape that I like to use a lot. It's made by using a mix of stairs, full blocks with slabs along the top. A roof like this can add some extra height to your build and can give you room for a second story for your interior. And this is the final roof shape that I'm going to show. One of my favourites, this one has more of a wing shape, made by using slabs, stairs, full blocks and a wall on top. A roof shape like this looks great in a fantasy or medieval style. Now we're going to move on to some more advanced tips and advice for your roofs. One thing you can do to add some extra detail is give your roof a trim. You can add a lot of interest by changing out the blocks on the inside of your roof. And here's another example with different blocks. This is where you can get creative and experiment with different palettes. You may have noticed there that I've added some extra detail on top of the roof. This is yet another thing you can do to make your roofs look extra special. Here is a basic one using walls and fences. And here's another example using fences along the top and iron bars on the ends. And finally my favourite one, I use this all the time. This is built up using walls, fence gates, fences and iron bars. And in case you didn't know about the fence gate trick, here's how to do it. You place walls with three blocks in between, fill in the gaps with fence gates, and this will give you a super awesome art shape. Now we're going to move on to some more advanced roof detailing tips. One thing I love to do is add some extra shape to my roof trim. Experimenting with different shapes here can lead to some really interesting roof designs. Adding some texture to your roof and adding some leaves is another great way to add some detail. And don't be afraid to knock out some of the blocks for your leaves. This can look really, really effective. Another detail I like to add from time to time are these rooftop plant boxes. This is a great way to add a touch of nature to your build and really helps with detailing out some of the more boring spots on your roof. Another great thing to add is extra structural supports. Connecting the top and bottom following the same colour as your roof trim really helps to break up the roof and make it look extra special. Another great way to break up your roofs and add some detail is to install some windows. Not only can this look good, it can also give you a place to look out of and watch the sunset before bed. Adding moss to your roof is another awesome way to add some nature. Not only can you place grass on moss, you can also place flowers for an extra splash of colour. Adding extra trapdoors, stairs and slabs is a really effective way to detail out your roof trim. This can give your build a more rundown and dilapidated feel. Perfect for a haunted house. There are of course many other roof designs out there. If you'd like me to go into more detail, do let me know in the comments and I can make a dedicated video. Following on from roofs, now we're going to take a look at chimneys. A great way to detail your roofs, but also your builds. Using campfires and chimneys is a great way to add a little bit of life to your world. Having things that move like smoke particles and minecarts really adds a new level of immersion. So I always try to add that where I can. And of course chimneys are a great way to do just that. But chimneys don't always need to be structured. Here's an example of a more organic chimney. An old tree stump that's grown through the roof of this house. Another thing I love to do is to give my chimneys a little bit of utility. And I've done that by placing some furnaces inside. And finally there's one cool trick you can do with the campfire. And that is putting a hay bale underneath. Doing that will make the smoke rise higher than without. Next up, we're going to talk about windows. There are a lot of options when it comes to making windows, and we're going to start with this. A very simple trick to make your windows look more interesting is to recess them back into the wall. You can do this by placing stairs above and below a glass pane. But don't be afraid to use other blocks to act as windows. Here I've used fences and also some iron bars. You can choose what you use for your windows according to the theme of your build. And here's a two wide window. In a two by two gap, you can place upside down stairs in the top corners to make this nice looking archway. And here's one similar to the last one, but this one's got a three wide gap. Maybe not the best protection from mobs, but it sure looks good. And here's one that you may have seen me use quite a lot in my Let's Play series. And this is one that I call a Val window. It's just like the one before, except you place a full block in the gap at the top and a wall underneath. And of course this can be infinitely expanded to whatever height you need it to be. Now we're going to take a look at some ways to decorate your windows. Starting with a few ideas for window frames. I like to mainly use wood because I think it has the best blocks for creating unique shapes. Here's another window frame but instead of using fences we're using stairs and trapdoors. 
This gives the window a bit more of a chunky look. And if you're looking to add a bit more greenery to your windows, you can do something like this, where I've added a small leaf box using a sign. If you want to take your window decoration to another level, you can build a small table below using stairs and trapdoors. Perfect for displaying your flowers. Another thing you can do is use trapdoors as shutters. This is a great way to add a bit of depth and detail to your build, not forgetting the lovely leaf box below. You can even have trapdoors facing outwards so it looks like the shutter is open. Another great way to add a bit more depth. Or you can add a small leaf box below a window that's higher up. Make sure to surround your leaf block inside so it looks supported. Adding a campfire above your window with an open fence gate underneath is a great way to give your window an overhang and adds a great bit of detail. Using grass blocks with trapdoors in front makes for a great window garden and gives you an opportunity to add more colour to your build by placing some flowers. And another thing I've done here is create a window in front of a nether portal. I think this makes a really cool and unique entrance. Next we're moving on to doorways. And for this we're going to start off with what not to do. If you put the door flush with your wall you're missing out on a big opportunity to add some depth to your build. Just like the windows, recessing the door back one block and putting a stair above achieves the depth that we're looking for. But you don't always need to make your doorways one wide. Here's an example of a three wide door. This is great if you're building on a bigger scale, but it doesn't have to stop there. Here's an example of a five wide door. By placing a door in the middle and trap doors all the way around, you can make a doorway as big as you like. You can extrude your doorway from your wall and add another level of depth and shape. This also gives you a great opportunity to show off your roof palette. Elevating your doorway by one block gives you an opportunity to build a staircase and makes your house a little bit more pleasant to walk into. You can make doorway overhangs using trap doors and a slab, another great way to add shape and detail to your build. And of course you can also make two wide doorways. Here I've used the same principle from the two wide window, placing the two upside down stairs at the top and placing doors and trap doors in behind. Now this may sound weird but a doorway doesn't always have to have a door. Here I've made a five wide archway and used logs and hoppers to act as an open gate. And once again this principle can be expanded to be any size that you need it to be. For example here's an 11 wide doorway. And one more thing you can do for your doorways is add a little bit of a frame around it. Here I've used stairs and trap doors to make a little circle, perfect for a hobbit hole. Next up we're going to take a look at paths. Starting with a really simple one, just a boring straight path block that you'd make with your shovel. Or you might do a similar thing with coarse dirt. These may look great in the right setting, but there are some things we can do to spice it up a little bit. Starting with giving your path a little bit more of a natural shape. Trying to avoid too many straight lines will give your path a more organic feel. Another thing you can do is add coarse dirt to the edges. This can give your path a bit more definition and make it feel more ingrained in your world. And depending on the setting you're building, you can mix up the palette. Here's a few examples. Another thing that I like to do to my paths is add some decoration on the edges, and as you can see here I've added a few spruce fences. If you want things to look a bit more lush and overgrown, or just want a splash of colour, you can replace some of the fences with leaves. On this example I've gone with more of a broken down wall feel. I think this can work really well for a built up farm area. And here we've got a similar vibe to the last one, but we're using wood instead. Maybe this will look good for a pathway in a forest. Another thing you can do to spice up your paths is add a little bit of vegetation. And here I've done that by adding a little bit of grass. And one more thing I love to do on my paths is add some stone buttons. They look like little rocks, but maybe you could use one to trigger a redstone contraption. Now we're going to take a look at building shape and ways you can improve yours. The first thing I want to show is a lean-to. This is a super easy and effective way to add a bit of shape to your build. Just built up by using slabs, fences and walls, you can make your build look a little bit better and have a place to store your things. Another great way to add shape is to add a hanging sign. This is a great opportunity to get creative and come up with some really unique shapes. You can also add towers to your buildings. This is something that I do quite a lot, but it's a really easy and effective way to make the shape of your building more interesting. Adding leaf overhangs to balconies and also on the side of buildings is another great way to add shape and also a splash of colour. Add a mix of leaves, campfires and trapdoors and you can make your own just like this. Add a garden wall and archway entrance on the side of your building, an easy and effective way to add structure. Variation in height is another great way to improve the shape of a build and here's an example of that, a staircase leading up to a lean-to shape. Here's another example on this archery range. Having different height towers and main structures make a build look more pleasing to the eye. With all these tips combined you can create awesome buildings like this, my villager trading castle. Though this might look overwhelming and complicated, it's really not. It's just a bunch of boring shapes mushed together with some of the added shape details that I've just shown you. And once you understand the basics of structure and shape, you can let your imagination run wild. 
Now we're going to talk about farmland. There's lots of possibilities and options when it comes to your farmland areas, and we're going to go over a few of them, starting with a few farmland wall ideas, like this one that's built up using logs and leaves. This gives a great English countryside hedgerow kind of feel, and it's one that I like to use quite a lot. And another one that I like to use is this broken down wall, built up using a bunch of different stone variants. It may look a mess, but when done in the right way, it can look really, really great. Just make sure to have the inside at least one and a half blocks high, otherwise your cows are going to escape. And if you're going down with a broken down wall feel, why not try making a broken down archway? Something like this can really make your farm entrance stand out, but not all your farm areas need to look organic and run down. Here's an example of something that's got a bit more structure and is also sunk down into the ground. This may not seem like the most humane way to keep your cows, but they are certainly going to have a hard time escaping. Now let's take a look at some ways you can detail your farmland. Starting with maybe an obvious one, hay bale piles. A simple and effective way to add something a little bit special, and it's an opportunity to play some lighting as well. Why not add a scarecrow to your field? We may not have crows in the game, but at least if they're ever added, you know your farm's going to be safe. Storage carts are a great way to add a bit of detail to your farmland, and you can also use them to display what's being grown in your field. Adding trees is a great way to break up what may otherwise be a boring looking field. Nice and simple, easy to do, this is a slightly customised large oak tree. Another thing I like to do to break up a field is to add some of these rock formations. Yet another simple but effective detail. Adding a small storage shack to a field not only gives you something else to look at, but also gives you a place to store your crops. And if that's not big enough for you, then you can build something like this. Surprise surprise, a bigger storage shack. Try adding paths that run through your field. I have one here that runs to the large storage shack. This just gives you an opportunity to actually walk through your field. But not all your farmland has to be flat. Here I have one that runs up a hill. Following the natural terrain can give your farm a more organic touch. And you may have noticed I've added a few leaves and composters. Leaves for a splash of colour, and the composters are actually covering up the water sources. And speaking of a splash of colour, adding two tall flowers to your field does just that. And if you're looking to add even more colour to your farmland, you can add small gardens like this just the other side of your farm wall. Adding old, rundown buildings is another detail that I really love to add to my farmland. You could even use it as a storage area again. Or alternatively, if you're looking for something with a bit more structure, just adding a farmhouse in the area, that's really going to do the trick. I decided to add buildings that match the aesthetic of my existing farmland. And of course, one last building that's great in a farmland area is a windmill. You really can't go wrong with adding one of these. Now we're going to take a brief look at retaining walls. A great way to break up terrain and separate parts of your project. And as you can see, this one here is built up using different stone variants in a much similar way to the broken down stone wall from the farmland. This is a detail I added quite a lot in my Let's Play series. But once again, not all retaining walls need to look broken down. This one made from stone and andesite has a lot more structure and would look really good in more of a city build. And here's a similar one for the last one, but this one's made out of wood. I feel something like this would look really good in a Wild West project. But really, you can use this kind of thing anywhere. Another example of a situation that I'd use a retaining wall is here on these stairs. Rather than leaving it just out in the open, something like this just gives the staircase more structure. Now we're going to take a look at a bunch of extra details and ideas for you to add to your worlds. Starting with some cool decorations like this log pile. Tied down with minecart rails and a couple of trapdoors, something like this would look really cool in a tree chopping area. Or maybe even a sawmill. And here's another type of log pile, but this one's using birch. Paired with a few birch variants, leaves and some moss, something like this would look really really great in a forest area. And I mean, come on, look how pretty it is. Try adding something like this storage pile. Not only does this look really cool, it's also an immersive way to have some bulk storage. An aesthetically pleasing way to cover up your chest monsters. I know I'm guilty of that. Adding piles of stone is a great organic way to detail your world, and wouldn't look out of place near your mine area. To be honest, things like this will look good anywhere. Now moving along to some plant pot designs. This one's built up using a composter with two leaves on top. A really nice thing to add to your interior, but also looks great outside too. And here's another one really similar to the last one, but instead of two leaves, you add a wall and then a leaf on top. Always good to mix these things up. And if you think the wall's looking too thick, you can always add a spruce fence like this. A similar effect, but still looking great. And the last plant pot I'm going to show is this one. A grass block surrounded by spruce trap doors, with an acacia bush on top of that, and then an acacia leaf on the very top. I really love this one. If you want to add a touch of magic to your world, you can build something like this, using an amethyst block and amethyst crystals. I use these a lot in my main area of my Let's Play world, you can see it here in the Tower of the Church. May seem like a weird choice, but it's a good splash of colour, and gave me a good opportunity to add some lore to my world. And I mean, come on, look how awesome they look.
Adding small custom trees like this is a great way to add detail to your area, easy to build up and great for fitting in smaller spaces. Having cranes coming out the side of your building is a great way to display what the building is for. For example this one here is to store my copper. I really love to add raised plant beds to projects I'm working on. It's a great way to fill empty space or even bland spots on your build. But not all garden areas need to be raised, like this one that's just on ground level. Adding small bridges is a great way to connect two buildings. Not only can this help with your project feeling a little bit disjointed, it's also something immersive to walk through and travelling around your world. Try building one of these small wheelbarrows. A lovely detail and a nice little space filler. Adding coal ore to the floor around your smeltery area is a great way to add a bit of extra immersion. It looks just like bits of coal on the floor. I love building small wells like this, another great space filler and detail, but also a place to fill up your potion bottles. Not only is adding small lean-tos like this a great way to cover up blank walls, it's also another opportunity to add some bulk storage. Make those chest monsters look good! Not all carpets need to be made of only wool. Try using other blocks that are a similar colour. Like here, I'm using red mushrooms. Why not spice up your mine area by adding some moving mine carts? We spoke about this before, but having moving parts in your build can really, really make it feel more alive. And this is just one example of how to do that. I definitely encourage you guys to give this a go. Having item frames attached to an open fence gate is another way to display what your building is for. And as you can see, this one is for storing dirt in my village. Adding boat docks is a really nice way to tidy up where the water meets land. And not only do these look nice, it's a place to park your boat. Adding chains between barrels is a great alternative to fences. Though don't do this to contain animals because uh, they'll be able to jump right over. Using raw copper surrounded by trap doors looks like fish in a barrel. A great detail to add to your boat dock. You might have to use your imagination a little bit. And if you want to make a boat dock in a smaller area, you can build something like this. Much the same as the one before, but on a smaller scale and also on ground level. I always love adding these when I'm living next to the water. Such a simple detail. You can use stairs with trap doors on the end to create a little bench. You might not be able to actually sit on it, but it sure does look nice. And here's an idea for a place to display your map. A nice simple pagoda with a beautiful surrounding garden area. A nice immersive detail here is a tree that's entering a sawmill. It's always great to tell a story where your materials are coming from. Surrounding two tall flowers with trap doors is a great way to make a little plant box. A super easy and effective detail. Adding flags is a great way to add colour, even just with these simple designs here. But they can get more complicated. Just like this one here, made with full blocks, carpets, slabs and trapdoors. They're not the easiest thing to build in the world, because you're really trying to capture movement. But not all flags need to be situated at the top of your build. You can also hang them off the side. Like this one here, it's a great opportunity to experiment with different shapes and colours. If you're looking to add a bit of pop to your house, you can add something like this. A lovely wool overhang. Perfect for some kind of shop or maybe a bakery. Adding fletching tables to an archery range is a lovely little detail to add. It just looks like a place that you'd store your arrows. Embracing nature and adding overgrown archways for entrances adds a great level of immersion if you're going for an overgrown feel for your project. Now we're going to take a look at some gradients, like this one that goes from oak planks to a bee's nest to yellow concrete powder and yellow wool. Then we've got this one that goes from coarse dirt to dirt to rooted dirt and then to granite. Now this one's great for your overgrown feel going from moss to mossy cobble to mossy cobble with glow lichen and then to cobblestone. This one I use a lot for terrain. This goes from tough to cobblestone to stone and then to andesite. Then there's this one that'd be great for an ocean theme that goes from warped planks, stripped warped stem, prismarine and then prismarine bricks. Placing plant pots on top of green glass panes is a great way to detail out a pond. They look just like little cattails. And finally, a neat little detail here. You can place a lantern or a chain and a lantern hanging off a lever. Cool. And that's everything for this video, guys. I really hope you found some of this useful. If you want me to expand on any of these sections, please do let me know in the comments and I can make a dedicated video. And if you want to be notified of those videos, make sure to subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.